Um, first of all, for uh, <clears throat> the charge time, the last thing you said, uh, that's a lie. Because I have evidence of, basically, there's a company called, uh, where is it? Uh, All Tarnano. It's very good name. But um, basically they're making a bus called the Proterra BE35, which is fully electric, unlike other hybrid electric passenger buses available. And it showcases that the company calls a first-of-a-kind fast charge system enabled by the company's use of nanotechnology-based lithium batteries. And basically they claim, well, it, they've actually proven in the past the company to be able to charge a battery for a bus. Okay, it's, 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 this is a bus battery. They can charge a battery in under 10 minutes. So, and that's right now. So in a couple of years, if they can charge a bus battery in 10 minutes, that means they can charge a car battery much faster. And in a couple of years, they'll be much faster. And as for, Jaron mentioned that the cops wouldn't have a fast enough car to chase down somebody, you know, if they were in a car. First of all, most likely the person running would be in an electric car, and if the electric car can't go fast, then they don't need a much faster electric car. So right now they make the Tesla, which is basically goes 130 miles an hour, and it can go 150 miles on one charge. And it's basically a sports car. But right now there's cops that use, you know, Corvettes in Las Vegas to chase some people. So that's how, and not only that, say if somebody were to run in, you know, Lamborghini away from the cops. Then the cops just have backup gas powered cars, you know, and there's still helicopters and planes, things like that. So, um, oh, for safety with the, uh, you know, like car crashes, um, that's a little bit exaggerated because actually the bus, you know, the same bus as the PE or the Cortera B35 is made out of carbon fiber, which is, you know, light material, you know, it's not even metal. So it's still really strong, but it's not, it doesn't have the mass of metal, it just has the strength of metal. So if you have two carbon fiber cars that are going to hate each other, I mean, that's what cars are made out of in NASCAR. So they still have crashes, but they're going 250 miles an hour, and your electric car is not going to be going 250 miles an hour. Um, so as for, you know, coal-fired uh, power plants, yes, that's the reality now. That right now, uh, I don't have the exact statistics, but I know I have an idea. It's like 50% of our power plants are run with coal. And right there's actually, I actually have, oh, let's see if I can find you. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Um, this is from the Scientific American. Um, it says charging up can be much less or much less guilt ridden affair when or where cleaner electrical sources like wind and solar are available. The website hybridcars.com points out that the more power plants are required to develop green power and emit fewer greenhouse gases, the environmental and health benefits will be further increased. So basically what this is saying is that power plants are being required to become more green now. And so that can only mean in the future that they're going to start not running on, you know, coal eventually. It's not something, this can't happen overnight. You know, us having oil didn't happen overnight. You know, they didn't build cars in a day. So, everything takes time. Oh, and for the natural disaster where, you know, if you're having an earthquake, all the power lines break. Well, when we have a natural disaster now on this, you know, the ground shifts, we have natural, we have natural gas pipelines <coughs> going to the ground. We have oil pipelines. And those cause, you know, What's worse, having a sparking electrical wire or an explosive gas pipeline blowing up underneath you? So I would say it would be better to have electric power lines going to the ground instead of, you know, explosives. Um, also, there are much, there are many more hazards from, you know, producing oil than there are from electricity. You know, right now we have an oil rig that's blown up and it's been 32 days since it's blown up and it's spilling oil everywhere. And that's that's a byproduct of refining oil. You can't, there's no other way to get down 5,000 feet if you drill it. So when that happens, you can't fix it and it just takes a lot. So that doesn't happen with electricity. You know, you just wait for the wind to come to you with the wind power. And, oh, there was a misinterpretation. Aaron thought that I meant trolleys, you know, like in San Francisco, as for the, uh, the car and the trains have electric cables above them. I was actually talking about bullet trains, and there's bullet trains in both Japan and France, and I mentioned that they go 210 miles an hour, so the ones in San Francisco don't go 210 miles an hour, so just wanted to clear that up. And, oh, and about the batteries. The batteries are recyclable. 
they may be, you know, four year battery life, but they are recyclable. So if that, you know, gas isn't recyclable, it gets burned and thrown into the atmosphere. You can't recycle gas. With the recyclable batteries, you take your battery out, you take it down to AutoZone, they give you a new battery, and they recycle that battery. So I would say that is a pretty good trade-off considering that gas burns. 